No offence, but where we discuss the uncomfortable topics, drop the truth bombs, and have the raw, real, and relatable conversations that make you feel socially acceptable. Before you actually start a business, think, is this what I want to do? Or is this because I'm seeing this on social media? It's a yeah. belief or society that I'm not successful, don't own my own business. Like, that is bullshit. Yeah. Guys, I've watched so much Netflix. I've watched about five series in a week. What's your top five series? Right, so Happy Valley has been really good. Can you keep not talking about that? that. I yeah, honestly, it. I cannot. I've heard I can't about, get about it. Then I watched a, Molly. Molly, you don't stop talking about it. Then I watched, yeah, honestly, so good. Then I watched um, Missing MH370. <gasps> That's the flight thing. Oh, okay. my, God. oh my God. Good. I really so, need to see that. So good. Okay. Then I finished watching you. Oh, I need to watch that. Don't rate I only it. ever watched season oh. one, babe, and I never really Guys, was interested to was keep watching. Was episode of Sex Life? That yeah, yeah. finished watching was that. Was it the whole season? Whole season. Oh, oh, don't yeah. tell me. I'm so, so is it? I, so yesterday, so I restarted watching I saw season you one. Went, I was like, and I was like, did babe, you know I, I did the whole thing in like two so I, days. So I thought Tony didn't know what it was. I was like, yeah, right, bro. bro. Everyone yeah. knows that man with the big dick. Um, <laughs> what else? Uh, the Murdoch Mystery. Mm. So good. That is wicked. So good. That I've so literally good. been binging. I've done no work. It's been great, but I have been ill. So. And you've yeah. celebrated yeah. your... Min- well, not really Honestly, but how, off, I've gone there. from like million dollar circle and I was, everyone was like, oh, I bet whatever you do, oh, you're going to be celebra- celebrating big. And I'm like... No. I've got nothing planned this weekend. Oh. And then all of a sudden, Sunday, we were supposed oh, yeah. to record. Bam. The worst sickness of my life. Thought I was actually going to die at one point. I was going to be found like hugging the toilet seat. Oh, no. yeah. yeah, no, I know. I need a man. <laughs> I just like, coming down, I'm ready to not be single anymore. <laughs> for real, I that actually really, That made me really sad. And it took me and you, me, you and Ty were like driving around the whole of my small town trying to get your pet dog A little corner shop, I was like, Dude, you need to sell diarrhea stuff. And then this guy walks in. And I was like, I didn't have diarrhea, by the way. Like, <laughs> okay, and I just walked off. I literally paid thirty pound for three months on Bumble because I was like, I'm ready to take dating seriously. Oh wow! Yeah, that's how bad I felt this week. So, yeah. what are you gonna look for the one then? Well. He's obviously got to find me, but I do have to swipe. It's a two way thing on Bumble, but <laughs> I'm actually willing to initiate. In conversation. Yeah, the good thing about Bumble is the girl writes first. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. sometimes I just do it to stroke my ego, swipe with a fitty, and then I just can't be bothered to have conversations. Yeah. So I'm not really taking it that serious. No. Um, that it's like a game. <laughs> Danny did post a really good post the other day, and it's something I've really been speaking about lately. I think I saw it. Yeah, not needing date. I was going to send it to you, but which is sick, and I want to go at her right now. It's probably just on your <laughs> Send it to me tonight. Yeah. I will, babe. I've got it saved ready for you. Yeah. You there. Love it. Love it. <laughs> So, obviously, we've just had um, International Women's Day. I already felt it this year. Power to the pussy. Power to the pussy, I'll tell you. Power to the pussy. Um, And, yeah, I think this week's just a great chance to talk business and female empowerment and women in business. Um, Obviously, you and I have also recently just hit I was just about to say, like, this is a celebration for both of you, really. Yeah. Yeah, and I think just... You know, this isn't specifically uh, a discussion around what it is that we do. Like, I know there's so many people right now looking for side hustles. And I think the way that we kind of want to take this topic today is how to know when the timing is right for you to start something new. Yeah. How to find what is your passion and how to monetize from that. Mm -hmm. Um, and just kind of like giving you the self-belief and the self-confidence because I think something we've really aligned with in the last couple of months is that the reason why people don't go for what they want or why they don't have success or why they quit is just the lack of self-belief. Yeah. Mm. Or it's the right, not the right time for them. But you know, they make, I'm one of those, it's not the right time. Mm. I truly feel like in the last year and a half, I'm starting to realise maybe there is no right time. If you're saying it's not the right time, you're making excuses because mm. you're not ready to take that leap yet. I was yeah. definitely that person. When is the right time to start a side hustle? When is the right time to start a new business? When is the right time to quit that job? Because if it's not, um, oh, my kids are too young, let me wait till they're more stable. Or oh, mm. once she goes to uni, maybe I'll do it. There's always an excuse or doubt, it's doubt. doubt. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny you say that because I actually was having this conversation with my friend who was one of the first ones I said to her, oh, I'm thinking about doing this business. And mm. she was like, I was 23. Bearing in mind, I had no kids. I was just working a nine to five. That's all I really had going on. 
And she was like, oh, are you even going to have time for something like that? <laughs> and then, I know, I know. And then I look at myself now and how mental life is. And then I remember coming away from that conversation with her. And then that's, I was really wanting to do it because I knew the need was I needed to earn money. But then I was like, do you know what? After my mum's birthday, then I can start. Or mm. after I go on holiday, then will be the right time to start. Yeah. Or let me see if I get this promotion at work first, because that's where I should be putting all my focus. And I think the more and more we allow external influences to impact us, you just never get started. Never start. I think it's also like, I'm going to throw a complete curveball out there, but I had this, so... I said to, I think it was Queen the other day or someone, and I was like, when I was 28, it was like one of the worst birthdays. I was crying, it was in lockdown. And you know, I was actually thinking, this is crazy, because I've earned probably £20,000 that month. And I was sitting there like, oh, it's so miserable. Yeah. And it really does show, like, money really doesn't bring you happiness. And yeah. even if you're really successful in one business, doesn't mean you're fulfilling that, that need that mm-hmm. you have that you're wanting to give. So... I was just like, I don't know what to do. And I was speaking to Maybrain's dad and he's really passionate about his work, which is something else I want to talk about because I don't know if you should always make money off your passion. Right. I don't okay. really think that's a good... I can vouch for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um... I think but- at different times, it it can speak and drive you, but after a while, it fades and you... Yeah, let's get into that in a bit. There's, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's an actual study where they've researched it and it's, um proven that like you're not going to do as well when you're getting paid for something you really enjoy you're Mm. less motivated to do it money does Mm. not motivate you at the end of the day it will when you haven't got any money and you want to make some money that's going to be a good motivation like you but Mm. it's not going to keep you sustaining building you money doesn't fulfill you so obviously I had that experience and I was just like I just want to be doing so much more and I knew I wanted to be doing stuff and I knew really deep down I think we all know what it is we want to do we know what we're good at Mm. and the thing is I think it's also really hard to figure out what you're good at because you're good at it you just think everyone's good at you're like that's not a skill it's just something like you might be good at making bread or cooking you're like that's Mm. not something to be good at it's just a thing Mm. but it is a real good skill to you I'm a well not terrible cook but I'm just not the biggest fan Mm. of it yeah you're not that bad mate I've had your food you're good babe you're good yeah I just don't enjoy doing it I fucking honestly sweat thinking about it (laughs) so yeah I was 28 absolutely crying my eyes out like and I knew what I wanted to do but it was like a block and from then, I really think it's like intent, setting intentions, like, okay, I'm ready to do X, Y, and Z. So that was at 28, and then at 29, just before I was 29, I had the idea, so this is 2021 now, had this huge idea, and I was like, okay, but I don't know how I'm going to do it. So then it's like, I've just had to shelve this idea, like, I don't know how it's going to happen. It seems like such a huge, wild idea, I don't know, it doesn't make sense to me. And then 2023 um, comes, so two years later, three, yeah, two years later, I'm now like, okay, I can see the idea. And it came through totally different. So originally it was like this book about something. Now it's like a website about something. And um, I can feel it's going to be a really huge idea. So then I'm speaking to like a few people about it. They're like, oh my God, this should be really great. Like I need this. And then I'm like, okay, God, like this is what I'm going to do. And then instantly God's like, you need to message this person. And I'm like, why? So I'm sending this message to a person. I'm like, oh my God, this sounds like such a great idea. Do you want to do a meeting? So we have the meeting today. And she's like, I want to partner with you. She's got a multi-million dollar business. And she's just like, yeah, this is a great idea. Mm. But can you see it was like a four-year pro- yeah. pre Yeah, sometimes it's pro- not about having the idea and action it. Like just it letting instantly. you mm. pull it all together slowly and surely. I do believe in some mm. sort of aligned action in a yeah. sense of like, if you have an idea, you can't just sit on it and like, oh yeah, it will come, it will come. Like, success You've got to move. Yeah. You've got a kind of, you like you got an intuition to say you need to message this person and that's exactly what you've do- done. Mm. So it's like aligned action. Um, but yeah, I think going back to what you said about sometimes you can't really do your passion as your full-time job. Mine was obviously I done beauty, obviously when I left school, went to college and done all that kind of thing. And then from 2020, no, from 26, no, from God, way before then, 2012, I think I've been self-employed and, um, I started doing like my brow business. I actually started off doing my makeup and was really successful in that. Worked on films, editorial shoots, um, that kind of thing. And then I was so busy, like back to back busy. And I remember being like fully booked for like three months in advance doing brows and makeup and stuff. Mm. And sometimes I was working until like two in the morning. And I remember just one day in 2016, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. And I stopped, like just completely stopped and was like, I'm not doing brows anymore. I'm not, I'm not working till two in the morning, just doing brows. And I absolutely, like that was my passion. Sarah, I absolutely what, loved it. what kind of clients were you doing brows at <laughs> two in the morning I for? I swear to you. Celebrity and stuff, weren't you? 
a celebrity. No, me celebrity. a celebrity. You were doing celebrity and like um, editorial. I've done some stuff, yeah. Mm. I, I think my um, favourite thing I've done, I've done a Alexandra Wang um, makeup for a, a clothes for oh. a magazine for that. Oh, that was amazing. wicked, yeah. That was so good. So that was in a magazine. Um, but yeah, I had clients like, well, like, I would say, like, I'm fully booked for three months, and I was like, is there nothing you can do? And I'd be like, <sighs> Oh, I could do okay. one a.m. I could do one, <laughs> one a.m. on Tuesday. You set an alarm and I'll be at your door, kind of thing. Honestly, well, it was crazy. Like just waking up. Yeah, I swear. Like I'd just text him, be like, "Yeah, I'm on my way," and I'd be like back to back driving to. It. it was insane. I made so much money. I'm not gonna lie. I made so much money, but I was so like I wouldn't say depressed, but I was I so, so exhausted. Because yeah, you didn't so set boundaries. Or yeah. I think as well when you're self-employed, obviously you you're exchanging time for money, right? Yeah. If you aren't working, you're not earning. So I can imagine as a self-employed person, it's a bit addictive to yeah, be constantly yeah. like, yes, 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 because mm-hmm. you're just stacking. You're stacking the exactly. cash. So I'd probably yeah. be going till 5 a.m. sometimes. I swear to God, <laughs> yeah. I had a top drawer and I had piles of cash in my top drawer. <laughs> oh, so I just wow. was making Tax so man. much money. Yeah, no, <laughs> making so much money. Uh, I did pay my taxes. <laughs> um... But yeah, I was making so much money. But yeah, it doesn't bring happiness. So I stopped in 2016. And then back in 2019, the end of, yeah, end of 2019, I was like, oh, I really, mi-. like people were just texting me like, are you going to do brows? Or can you do my brows? And I'd be like, okay, yeah, I'll do it. And then obviously got back into it. And I just do it one day a week now. And I absolutely love it. Like I love going to the salon. I love being around the girls. I love all my clients mm. and just... Because I don't feel like it's my full time like focus. I just yeah, it's, it's, it's my passion. passion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I find that like the study was like they gave two groups of people something that they loved doing, and they got on with it really quick, loved it. Then they tried to get them to do something again that they loved doing, but paying them. And right. actually, they chose the other option of not like not doing what they love because the money incentive took away the joy and the value of doing it. Mm. And that's why a lot of people do breach like don't make your passion your paycheck. Like some people it works for. I'm not saying one size fits everyone because it really doesn't. Mm. But like some people works for like they love doing that and making money off it. But I see even with May Wayne's dad like he's really passionate at his job, but he even says it's like when you got to make money off it, it's just not fun anymore. Mm. Like he just wants to go have fun with what he does because he loves doing it. Mm. And it's like now it's a job. You want to do it 50 hours a week and rah, 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 and you've got to make this and it's now a business. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, Targets it's and stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's not fun. So I guess like the, the question is at what point do you realise or think about looking for something new? What mm. triggers that in a person? Do you know what? I feel like um, I've recently had this type of experience because obviously you guys know I work a nine to five. I've got a job, employed, work for someone. And I I love my job. I love the company. Everything is amazing. But over the last few years, I have been chasing that little bit of extra, that little bit something else, more like a side hustle. Mm. Um, and I made like silly mistakes. I signed up to this oh, travel Thing and they're like oh get your holidays for free or whatever oh, yeah. but really you've just got to recruit a whole bunch of people I've done like a little dabbling in things like that but nothing really interested me I didn't care enough to put in the effort and the passion and all of that uh, but more recently I went to a military training base for some leadership course with work and it was absolutely incredible and I think I now feel like it's definitely time for me to invest in not just my job, but something on the side that I have fun passion, not money passion. I'm going to get paid for passion. And it was just watching these men and women who've lived their life with pure purpose. A lot of the soldiers are like, back then were being paid 16.5k a a year. They were absolutely, literally laying down their lives. Mm. And what was driving them wasn't the money. It was the passion, protect and serve. And I was just so blown away by that message you know I have a mini meltdown if my commission is a little bit off at work I'm like oh am I going to survive this month Mm. it's not about that anymore and I understand why I was like that over the years that's fine that was my primary driver then but now it's not and I'm doing sort of different things at work different roles and I'm getting more involved with culture and people and passion like it's super fun and working with the military guys this week that's reinforced that for me you guys know me. I think since we've started doing this podcast, I've been like, oh, how many times have I reached out to you, Holly and yeah. Lacey? I've always maybe wanted to do something, but not quite like the idea I've got in my head now. And it's mm. still all aligned with my role. My life doesn't have to change drastically. It's just now 
feeding a new passion that I'm doing because I love so much, not because of the financial reward. Mm. I love that you said that because I read something recently. If you haven't read Stephen Bartlett's book, like, read it. It's life-changing. What's this? Happy Sexy, Happy sexy Millionaire. Yeah. Yeah. Just it's such a great it book. Good, yeah. Like, you can't put it down. And um, one thing I love what you said, and this is, so if you don't want to make your business your passion, because so many people I speak to, like, for instance, I was on this course with this multi-millionaire. She used to be a, um, she was bankrupt at 38. Now she's one at Forbes, like richest women in the world at 52. She's incredible. She created poo theory, the poo mm-hmm. spray. She's like, I literally turned shit to gold. I'm like, <laughs> you did, girl. I'm here for it. Um, I love that spray. <laughs> so great. So then she was like, oh, um, one of the guy's passions that she works with, like he's a multimillionaire, but his passion was doing work in Africa. Now this doesn't bring money. So he no. needs money to live and he needs the money to be able to fill his pra- f- 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 fulfill his passion. So he had to go do a business that, you know, he still enjoyed doing, but it wasn't his passion. And the great thing, so I thought, okay, how do we show people how to do that? And it's something I've really been looking at lately and I'm really investing in now is writing down your skill sets. Mm. What are your skill sets? He's called it skill stacking. So for instance, in my businesses, the ones that I'm creating now and previous one, so social media, I feel public speaking is probably one of the biggest skill sets you'll probably pretty yeah. much ever yeah. need. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm social actually media quite as well, sick of public marketing. speaking. Mm. A lot of people get nervous and twitchy. I'm like... I thrive in that environment. I'm like, oh my God. Hands. No, I'm Ready? like a sweaty mess. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> Something you can work on there is like doing it naked in front of the mirror, like just practicing every day. <laughs> Sarah's like face. Not with this body right now. <laughs> 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 Congratulations to the baby. Yeah, do, hey yeah. baby, you're so cute. <laughs> you got this little millionaire already in the making. <laughs> Um, yeah, so like just write down your skill sets, like what are the skills that you have and start skill stacking. Where else can you invest to get more skills to be able to create a business that's going to pay to maybe fund your purpose or that is already your purpose. But if anything, no matter what you're going to do though, if you're going to start a business, majority of businesses are a high start. Mm -hmm. So I look at a lot of people's traditional businesses, like even a business I'm starting now, to be fair, the start's probably about a thousand pounds. Even this podcast, it's probably not been that much. Maybe about a like, grand. Mm. Yeah, mm. grand all in, more, maybe yeah. 1500 quid all in. My first business, we do network marketing, that was only a thousand pounds in the beginning. Now it's free to start. Our with. social hire was probably about four grand all in. Yeah. Mm. Probably four could have grand. saved ourselves a lot of money and did it at three. Yeah, yeah. But we made definitely. mistakes along the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so many. <laughs> <laughs> but like, then I look at someone else's business, like Maybrain's dad, and I'm like, wow, that's probably like, I don't know. 20 grand start mm, because it's like so kit. much equipment yeah, yeah that you need so everyone's businesses are going to be different and it's about finding ways to make money in order to get to that life purpose mm. like i think we're too much like for one we just want stuff too quickly 100 percent. i think you that's need the to downfall get, yeah. you need to get comfortable and understand okay i'm gonna do like me for instance i knew what i really wanted to do i didn't know how the hell was gonna happen Three years later, I'm finally getting all the downloads and all the people coming to me yeah. and like everything's aligning, but that's taken three years. Like it wasn't really like on my time. It was kind of God's time. I just put the idea out as I know what I want to do, but like you have to get comfortable with like, okay, I'm not going to earn money for the next year. Mm. How can I scale back my living? How can I scale back my income? Because this is what I really want to do. And something I wanted to touch upon because when I first started network marketing, my first year, I, my two highest commission checks within like February to February were eight pound and then 35 pound. It's so cute. It's so cute. But do you know what? Most people would have quit by then. Yeah. yeah. Most people would have quit. And this is the no, thing I'm trying to say. No, they would have quit like month two probably. Month two. Yeah. Like, yeah. Everyone's yeah. like, you're crazy. And like, obviously I was like, pay- I paid for a kit and like products and I paid to go to all these places for training. And I used to get flown around for free and get paid to take photos of. So people are like, why are you paying to go there? Like, you're crazy. It's never going to work. And I literally just had to silence what people... I just distanced myself, to be honest. I was like, I just can't deal with your negative energy because you're going to be in the same position next year than what you are right now. And they still are in the same position 10 years later. You know what I don't understand, though? I'm really confused by people's mentality, right? Because obviously, I'm not... I am a nine-to-fiver. Shout out to all my nine to five people out there. It's absolutely stable and I love it. Mm. But I don't understand why some people get so angry and bitter and really want to slag someone off for starting something like network marketing. Why is it, what is wrong with people? Just let people choose their path. I would never look at my friend and try and tell them, don't do it. You're wasting your time. Yeah, but I'm not asking you to pay my bills, bro. So what's the problem? (laughs) Do you know what? I think a lot of it's fear, naivety. um... I think they're jealous. 
Um, yeah. Probably not so much jealous on the network marketing front. Because <laughs> but, <laughs> I mean, they're just jealous. Our other that businesses, someone... probably. But I, I mean, think... look, I'll be honest. Network marketing, we can just call it as it is, hasn't got the best um, reputation. reputation. No. And to be fair, I see why. Because even me and you back in the day when we started, we're doing really like Mate, shitty It is one things. of the most cringiest industries in the world and I'm literally working so hard to change this now same it cringes me out so much like I hate the spamming I hate like acting yeah, the stupid spamming shit. bullshit yeah mm-hmm. I hate oh all God. the cringy Hi, yeah no I hate oh all of God, the cringiness but, <laughs> but we'll put our hands up and be like we, we went through yeah, that phase but that. it's like as the professionals now that have burnt the money and pushed through it and learn you start to learn, do you know what let's really try and make this a much more credible industry because it works if you put the work in, mm. of but I think people and professionals naturally see it as the hey huns, the the spammy messages, and yeah. I get it. And we just My have to was take like, ownership. Like, that was beneath you, but then <laughs> now you know. I now explained it to her. Now she's like, oh, actually, I see like what you mean now. Like, but, you see, it's a lack of education. There's you know people like myself and other people in the industry that are really starting to streamline it I think and you're seeing that it is getting better over the years mm-hmm. and people are yeah. doing things better and so it takes time. I think time. the fact that things have changed like we've been in the business what nine years yeah. nine years so, well, um, yes. so I feel like in the beginning it wasn't more like hate. It was like, oh my god, you lot of scammers! Like you're, <laughs> you know, like, you know, people, like I was straight up. Like people were putting me on spotted dunstable, being like, yes! basically, <laughs> avoid like me and my we other were, business partner. Are yeah, you it was, shit yeah, me? no, I that swear to God, it was god. so funny. So wait, you was in like a Facebook group as an avoid Sarah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like spotted yes. scammer Sarah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that yeah, is straight so up. sad. And it's probably people that I know, which is funny, but I don't... The thing is, I just put my blinkers on. That care. shit motivates the fuck out <laughs> of me. No, I awful. didn't leave my house because I was so scared. <laughs> I didn't know who I'd bump into. It'd been slagging me off. <laughs> but I put my blinkers on and worked freaking hard. And I got to one away from the top in the first 12 months. So, yeah. like, that, that... I'm not saying... I don't get motivated by people saying negative things about me I don't give a shit if people talk bad See, about me that's yeah, do yeah, you yeah. I'll thrive on it keep oh. talking shit about me babes that, that makes you work drive harder. me it used it to be me but you know I really think now guys you know I've been on this journey so I'm very mm. like all about intention mm. and I just believe if you start something in a negative intention it's going to end up with a negative outcome yeah, in yeah. all aspects of your life so now it used to be guys and I, I remember at one point being like I need more haters because I'm not wanting, I'm not driven anymore because no one's hating on me mm. everyone's like oh she's doing it and I'm like yeah, yeah. bitches yeah. But I needed mm. hate, and it was like, well, Nace, like, dude, you really need hate to like be successful. Like, that's, that's actually not wild. Okay. Like, mm. yeah, like I don't want to be wishing that in my life. So I've had to now find something. Okay, how can I do this from a place of love? And how? And when you're motivated to do something, it's because you really want to do it. it. Just like it is great to have a starting point, but I really do, and I've actually seen it in my experience with people building businesses around me that when they do start something from that negative place, mm. it doesn't usually end that positively. Mm. Then again, you're just looking for haters to be able to build, and it's like. It's just really unhealthy. Mm. Yeah, I think sense. mine was the opposite. I think mine was like, oh, I've got the freedom to be creative. I've got the yeah. freedom to like work the hours that I want to and not be kind of tied down. So, yeah, the haters didn't push me. <laughs> I'll just, yeah, just put blinkers on, like I said. And, and just keep going. Yeah. Going back to the point of like, you've got to just put your head on it and kind of just not let anything get in the way. Like, so also in Stephen's book, and I really love this point, he was like, you know, I'd rather, he's like, I'm the biggest procrastinator. Me he's too. like a multi-millionaire. Mm. I am too. And it's like, then I started to look like, do I rather want to watch Netflix or do I actually want to build this business? Or do I want to go out and get drunk with my friends or do I want to actually make money? And it's funny because during my 20s, I looked back at all my photos and I was like, oh my God, I've really like missed out on all the drunken nights. And I was like, in my 30s, I'm like, I'm kicking back whilst they're all working. <laughs> so mm. actually, I think I did the right option. Like, And now I get to travel and do whatever it is I want to do whenever I want to do. Mm. But yeah, I had to miss out on drunken nights. I think that's what you've kind of got to <clears throat> come to terms with is that you it's a complete mindset shift. It's a complete mm. change in lifestyle when you start a business. I lost one of my best friends. I remember exactly like you said, I'd just started 
with my network marketing business and then that weekend I think they'd gone to Edinburgh and I was like guys I can't go like I'm too busy I'm focused right now she really didn't like that and then there was just having some things like jealousy and it's sad because you really do see who supports you your real friends come out in them times they really do and you know I've seen stuff on socials about like you know your friends will support you and buy from you and they'll post this and share this and Actually, do you know what? Over the years, I've come to realise your friends are your friends. Yeah. Mm. They're not your clients. They're not your customers. Like, yeah, if they can share a post here and there, that's great. But they don't have to buy from you. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think I'm that's where you have to have that level of respect. Family, the least likely people to buy Yeah, from no. Me. A lot I've of my friends and family didn't initially. Yeah. They were like, yeah, okay, no thanks. And that's fine. You just move on from that. But I think as well, asking for opinions in the beginning, if you've got your heart set on something and you're like, right, this is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. And then you're like, oh, by the way, I'm thinking of starting my side business or I'm thinking of doing this and you get a couple of negative responses. It can really if put that's you off. enough to put you off, don't tell anyone. Yeah. Yeah. Do not tell anyone. Like, get yourself started. I, how I start every single business, like for you, you know, you just think it and it comes to you and it literally does come to you. Whereas me, I'm straight into the, my, my notes section of my phone and I'm like, right, marketing, because I think marketing's the biggest thing of setting up any business and, you know, really leveraging. Like, right, what's my marketing plan? How much money do I need to invest? How am I going to get that money? You know, you said it earlier. If you're like wanting to start up a business, sell anything that you can get rid of and buy again and have that as motivation to yeah. buy through your new business, right? Once you've made that money back. Shoes, any materialistic thing. Cut that's down just your car. Like cut down your car. You need to like... Just honestly, like even if it is your nights out or your takeaways, all of that makes such a difference. So if you've yeah. got that pot to get you started, and actually, do you know what? I think a lot of businesses these days can be done online. I would personally never dream, this is personal, of setting up a, a shop front business now like you just wouldn't do it not with the way there's e-commerce I actually saw something on Facebook in Bedford do you remember that place called All Ears yeah with all the crystals and stuff so they closed then they've uh, reopened after four months and I made a comment on there and you know some people liked it some people probably didn't like it but I was just like why would you after closing for four months push yourself back onto the high street with the overheads the business costs you know, the staffing costs when you could just be selling that online, learning how to Facebook advertise, leverage, like... I think some businesses need a front shop. I think some businesses don't need a front shop. I think maybe from a sense of, like, a crystal shop, mm. they like that energy exchange with a maybe, person. Yeah. So that, that might... They might have closed it and thought, I'm literally not in my passion because the and one thing... Like sometimes want to be the people. Yeah, exactly. Maybe people. And I know that you can vouch for this as well. In lockdown me and Holly were just like itching to, to, yeah like yeah. I want to be around people mm. I miss not being around people I miss being at events I miss doing things and that's when our idea came together so I do feel like maybe people do have shop fronts because they like that energy exchange the interaction yeah mm. the interaction being around people something I really love about businesses for me and I think this is things there's loads of different types of businesses I know for me I'm really into human design and human design you're going to get to see how you best best work as a human so for me actually I'm not designed to work that many hours a day and I've really been like almost um confused and like I was I went for a lot of stuff of not feeling good enough not feeling worthy and I think this is the bit we should cover in in the next kind of part of this Mm -hmm. but I went through that because I was like, you know, I don't have to put in as much work as everyone else does. I don't really get it. But I get paid a lot. And it's generally as the type of energy I am. Like some people are built to just put in loads of work and get the same money back. Mm. Whereas I'm built to put in a little bit of work and get the same money back. So when it comes to me building businesses, so like this one for now, I know I've got to put in the next probably 50, 60 hours, maybe 100 hours over the next two months into building this business. Then I know all I've got to do is like Facebook ads and whatever else. Oh, my goal is that I build these whole businesses and then I work two to three hours a week on each business, but they're going to make me a lot of money in return. Mm-hmm. So it's like you've got to look into different ways. Like, do you enjoy working a lot of hours? Do you actually feel like I don't actually have the energy to do that? Because yeah, because the truth something is, some everyone. people really get a thrill out of working 10, 12, yeah. 15 hour yeah. days. It's yeah. literally if they're not doing that job or focusing on that business at any given moment, they feel really uncomfortable or mm. they feel bored, like they're wasting their time. So it it's could definitely be about. More. Yeah. what's right for you as an individual yeah. I think what what type of people I always feel sorry for are the ones who are just slagging it getting barely anything in return 
and they're miserable to boot. Mm. What, setting up a business? Mm. Um, I mean, look, most most businesses, it does. You don't actually earn money in your first, first year. year. It depends true, on yeah. what you do. Five years. Isn't like ninety five percent of businesses like most traditional down, businesses yeah. don't make it past the first five years. Yeah, like you've and this is the thing you've got to understand. Like, how much money am I investing? Like, do I create a business plan? You know, I had somebody message me the other day. She's been working in a salon for so long with her mum, and she's like, you know, I finally want to go off and do my own thing. Yeah. Do I get a salon? And I'm just like, no, 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 no. Like, no, don't, don't. don't. And then she's like, oh, I think I'm going to set up something in the back of my garden. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Then, you know, no business expenses. Overheads are cheap. You can go and work as and when you want. Mm-hmm. She's got a little boy. So it's like flexible working. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just, I think, working out what's going to work for you. Um, another thing that I think is really important as well is being resourceful. I think so many things why people, so many reasons of why people don't start things or quit or, you know, when shit gets tough, right, is, you know, prime example, none of us knew how to start a podcast. Yeah. Mm. Oh my gosh. Like, we luckily have, like, friends that do it, so we were able to get loads of help from them, but editing this podcast (laughs) video-wise, I've been living on YouTube asking for so much help, working, like, crazy hours to work it out, but now I'm like... I feel like I picked up a new skill and if I yeah. ever wanted to, you know, cut videos and edit videos for somebody in the future, I can make money from it. Yeah. And your social medias, you can always, like, make them yeah, so much better because, now. But like. have you noticed how my social media, I'm doing all yeah, these cool videos really, really. now. So I've learned that, cut, cut, things. So it's like, you're always levelling up when you start these new businesses, like the social high, there was just yeah, so much that we didn't learn about, didn't know about that. And then we've had to learn about Facebook ads to, you know, leverage the marketing plan. Even like communication between different businesses and returning customers yeah. and mm. things like that. It's just, it's crazy. Cause you, you obviously you just start off with this idea. You don't know how big it, you don't know if it's going to fail. Yeah. I remember us being like, do you think this is going to work? We were like, don't know, but it'll be fun. Yeah, so and it's like, not a that's huge how we investment. It. And no. it's, you know, I think that's what there. you need to do, though. Take away the money pressure. Because yeah. yeah, a lot of things I see about mm. people starting businesses is like, the I need to make fear. 50 grand a year because that's how much I earn. And then they want to quit their job and just run into it. And I'm like, yo. <laughs> really important you brought this up. Yeah, because like, this be is where people, people think they have then. to start and quit their full-time job straight away. Mm. No. Yeah, that's the worst thing you could, that's the yeah, worst. No. I mean, I'm not, it's just the thought of that gives me so much anxiety. Yeah, yeah. you'll I never just, start anything. Could, yeah, you, if I did no, talk to start notice, something, like, well, I wouldn't. I've got no income Absolutely. to feed my kids. But you know what? I feel like it works for a very small amount of people. I would never do that. I would definitely much rather work on something build it up slowly because no wonder your anxiety ridden and your business is going to fail because you've just left your full-time job quit yeah to start focusing on something where you don't know where it's going and if your you mind is going to be a mess you don't know if you're going to actually enjoy it either that's so true. it's like you're yeah. throwing away everything because just because it's a dream and you think it's going to be amazing when yeah, you get yeah. into it you might be like do you remember how scared I was to hand in my nine, uh, my resignation? Yeah, you were earning a lot. P. I was yourself. earning P. <laughs> like, she was earning more in her business than in her job. I think I was earning like, oh, I think it's time. I remember Holly being like, listen, I want to earn eight grand a month before I quit. And I didn't know anyone earning eight grand a month. Like when I was like, cool, babe, we'll do it. No, <laughs> but I was earning about eight grand a month at the time. No, 10 grand. Because he goes, how much do I need to pay oh, you yeah. to be afford you? Oh, and I was I like, remember this. 10 grand. And he was like, what? And I was like, yeah. <sighs> But I felt great walking out. Yeah, I was like, like yeah. boom. <laughs> um, but yeah, like even at that point, because I think that's another big thing. I remember working in my job and thinking, how do people like rely on themselves every month to find that money? I, yeah. And that's, I get the whole comfort of a nine to five because you know you're guaranteed it's that income come. every month. Yeah, sure. So I, I understand that pressure. But, you know, whatever business you set up, just make sure before you leave a job, I always say at least, what, three times your monthly salary to be safe i would yeah. always say like you should have however much it costs for you to live for either six months or a year I'd yeah say. if you have that saved then leave your job mm. but as long as you can pay yourself for a year i mean like live like pay what you need to pay if you've got that saved then quit your job do fine because you've got a year then of no stress and like, mm. that's always my thing to people is we need to minimize the pressure the stress in actually doing something because like me, I didn't earn an income, a great deal of income for a whole year. And I would have had to have quit if that was my only income or I relied on that. Mm. But I didn't need to stress. I was like, no, I love this. I'm so passionate about this. I know this works. I just know it's going to work for me. I just had a feeling. And nothing was going to stop me from doing that. 
but I had an income from modeling still. Mm. And then when I started earning a great income, I was like, okay, I'm gonna let modeling go now. And it was, was still a bit of a risk, that was mm. my comfort money. But it was like, you know, I'm gonna jump all in now. But I was earning triple the amount doing this than I was modeling. Mm. I kind of wish I just continued at my job, yeah. did the basics and had that as a cash cow. Mm -hmm. mm. No, babe. Actually, no, I had no. the best time after. Yeah, but. no, <laughs> but, but can I, I just... give away 35 hours <laughs> like, for getting paid peanuts? <laughs> take that back edit cut, cut. <laughs> no but I, I do think like half the time with people when we say to people you know it's you are going to have to work your nine to five and then you are going to have to yeah. use those hours when I got home from work bearing in mind I wasn't doing nine to five I was doing seven till seven I was working recruitment and yeah. sales savage savage <laughs> so for me like I had to make the choice to be working from seven till twelve one o'clock in the morning of course yeah but I that, wanted to because yeah. I could see the bigger picture mm. whereas a lot of people don't actually want to give up their spare time because they enjoy you know their weekends they Doing enjoy Netflix which binges. is fine which is absolutely yeah. fine no shame right but then you can't but complain don't complain when you yeah. have because no business. it's that transition of six Six months to a year and that's why you see the memes going around or whatever the you know the quotes if you put everything into your business or focus on something for six months it can completely change your life yeah, three months life. of working seven till twelve completely changed the game for me yeah. i've was, never worked as hard as i did those three months in no, my business yeah. insane and that set you up forever pretty much set me that still up. pays you now and yeah one thing i think we need to get a valid point across is do you actually even want a business? Mm. Because I think we just see stuff on social media like, oh, that looks great. Yeah. Oh, look at this. It's a lifestyle. And it's I like, have a business. That yeah, toxic like, hustle ew. mentality like, yeah, yeah. thing. Like, no, yeah. like, some people are designed to be employees. That's yeah. what they're like. Some people are designed to just be like the, the right-hand man or, you know, the, the project manager or this kind of stuff. Your employee, that, that's what you're here to do. And don't be ashamed of that. So before you actually start a business, think, is this what I want to do? Or is this because I'm seeing this on social media? It's a yeah. belief or society that I'm not successful don't own my own business like that is bullshit yeah. success comes in so many different it forms, absolutely like, does. So many yeah. forms the like. i think as well what you was talking about a little while ago saying um about it's just lost out of my head <laughs> oh, baby <laughs> brain <laughs> um oh yeah okay what you was just saying about like quitting your job and then going all in i always think of it in a space where i've been before where it's like i've been speaking about energy a lot if you're going in a place of like desperation, like you have to earn a certain amount of money every single month to live, that's what you're portraying across and you're not going to attract that back. Yeah, if you're going to attract kind of, rubbish yeah, energy. Because, yeah, exactly. But if you're like high energy, you've got no money worries, you've got no stress, the bills are being paid and you're doing your passion, you're building your business on the side, it's almost like a completely different energy exchange mm. where you're going to be able to attract different people to come to you. So... So I want you to put it like this, if I can just put it into like a cartoon version of what you said. So it's like, okay, um, you're like to God, God, I want to do this business. And then you're putting out stress, lack, worry. Oh my God, I'm never going to pay these bills. Oh my God, the money's not coming in. Oh my God, we're around. God's like, oh, no money's coming in. Cool, I'll give you more of that. That's what you want. Cool, give you more, give you more, give you more. Imagine if you're in a job where you're secure and you feel good. And this is exactly where I was at. Like, this is where I really think the self-belief and the self-work has to come in. And I, in Stephen's book again, and it's, I only preach this so much because it's been so valuable in my own life. Like, I will never preach I'm going to have one done or like experience. I just don't believe mm. speaking on things that you haven't mm. done or whatever. Like I'm just not that type of person. So like journaling has massively helped me in the last six months, like drastically changed my life. Like if you literally read my journal, the things I was begging for in my journal are now happening now. It's like insane seeing it. And he spoke about it, he's like, you need to journal. It was like, this is probably the best thing he's ever done in his life because you see patterns of what you're doing, why you're creating things, like, why does this circumstance keep happening? So first of all, I'd really get clear on like, what is it you want to do and are you the type of person that wants to do it? What's stopping you? Why is it stopping you? Where's this belief coming from? Go and heal that stuff because Holly was like one of my main, well, I had a really great person for Holly as well and then Holly come into the business and Holly was just like, your energy was so on point. Like I trusted and believed you were going somewhere. Although I wasn't really at that point yet, but it doesn't matter if you're not at that point because energetically I was and it met yeah. me there. Mm. The energy, I put that energy out, the energy met me. It's like if I was in a space where I'm stressed, worried and just freaking out and whatever, I was like, girl, that's when I said to you, like you were like, I want to earn eight grand to leave my job and I was like, and eight grand. I was like, yeah, bitch, let's do it. Yeah. And she was like, we're going. And yeah. what did she end up doing? And in eight grand, before she leaves her job, because I was like, I'm not fucking scared. I'm willing to do this. Like, no matter what it takes, mm. I will put my all into this without selling your soul. And I'm not saying you have to, like, 
not skip your kids' birthdays and shit like that. Yeah, like, let's just talk about sacrifice quickly. Yes, and I course. think we've both been to blame. Like, you know, well, we all do because we're told you have to sacrifice time and you have to do yeah. this. I mean, look, I did sacrifice a lot in the, well, I say a lot. It was like friends' but parties is it a and sacrifice? stuff. Well, not really. Like, a sacrifice. I think of sacrifice as like deathly. Yeah, <laughs> like, someone yeah. I think like sacrifice for me is like Mabel Rain has a school play and I can't go to that because I'm doing this business meeting. Like that mm. feels like a sacrifice mm. to me. Like mm. I don't really, I don't know actually, I don't know what type of mum I am. It depends what day is, but <laughs> I don't know if I want to do that. I haven't really built my life to be like that. Or like, I don't know, a sacrifice is like, you know, um, it's really hard to, I don't know. I think a sacrifice is the right word because in order to gain something, you've got to give up something. That is. Do you know what? That's I what you're substituting. Said this to someone the other day, this was this is a point I wanted to make. So I'm glad you said this. It was um full moon the other day in Pisces or whatever. I can't even remember. But basically, and it was so weird because I said this to this person, and the next day I saw it on Instagram. And I was like, it's the truth. I did send it to. Her. I was like, see, I'm so fucking connected. <laughs> I was like, what are you willing to give in order to receive? Yeah, that's it. And this is the big point. Energy is all about giving, receiving, giving, receiving. And I've, I've had so many people talk about it recently. I was like clicked like light bulbs in me what are you willing to give to receive are you willing to get up an hour earlier are you willing to read 10 pages of a day a book of a book a day are you willing to journal are you willing to start um researching how to edit or do this or do makeup like what are you willing write that down i'm willing to do x y and z i'm willing to sacrifice x y and z in order to receive and then let god know what is it you want to receive back or universe whatever you mm. call it i want to receive this amount of money and this and this and this i think the one key thing is is that we make these goals, you know, like these smart goals. Mm. I fucking hate them. Mm. <laughs> like anything like corporately or just like anything yeah, that's like, yeah. this works for everyone. Like it's bullshit. Like mm. none of us are the same. You know what worked for you and you no, and you no. and you? Mm. None of us have worked the same. Like doesn't fucking work. So we're not We've made built to be the so same. Differently, yeah. So we? fucking yeah. differently. Yeah. It's a joke. Like mm. I've really learned that not everyone's the same. So anything that's telling you to do that is BS. Like do what feels good to you. But you need to make sure you're in a good place mentally. Because mm. no matter what, if you grow up in a really poor family, that poor cycle will keep pulling you back. Do you know mm. how many times I've gone broke? Like, it is a joke. How many times? <laughs> it's just a joke now. I'm like, oh, God, we're going broke again. <laughs> okay. What are we going to do this <laughs> what do I need time? To do now? <laughs> just the lessons. It's the money blueprint. And yeah. I think we can and definitely have a topic on that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Because I've and definitely had an up and down experience mm. with that in business. Oh, sure. my God. In every job mm. I've had, mm. like, I've been self-employed since 18. And every business I've had, trust me, I have lost, like, tens of thousands of pounds and been literally broke and then having to start again and honestly I've been in at quite a near point of that recently and I fucking love that point people are scared shitless right and they're right. willing to just quit and like we're going into recession now and it's why I point I wanted to make it because there is going to be a point where it's going to get fucking scary and people are going to be losing shit but this is the point where the most millionaires are made and this is what I'm gassed about now I'm like Bitches be sleeping. I'm gonna. Sh I'm just blooming. Like, yeah, I am no, ready. This is the time. Yeah. There to is be nothing like new. more hungry. I was like, what's the difference between me and like other people I know? Is that they're comfortable, but like that when I'm hungry, fuck me. Like I will put <laughs> anything that I need to, and I know I'll get there. And I back myself more than anyone. Yeah. People can tell me anything, and I do not care. I do not believe you. I don't give a fuck what you say. I'm gonna do this, and that's the kind of level you need to be at, I believe, in order to build a successful business. That's the self-belief, yeah. 100%. Yeah, I'm the same, that. when my back's against the wall, that's when the fire comes out, and that's yeah. when I do amazing things. That's your growth zone. Yeah. You're never yeah. gonna grow earning your 10 to 20K a month because you're comfortable, no, you're, you're on holidays, you're chilling, you're not doing any work. Yeah. You're not grinding. I was, <laughs> I was going backwards when I was doing I that. I grind on my best when my back's at the wall when I I've feel like two grand a month. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I love shit, the 30 grand the ones. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like when I'm a bit like that, when my back's against the wall and I'm like, shit, I need to be earning money, I always go back to being more spiritually aligned. Okay. And then go down that path and I'm like, right, what do I need to do? And then yeah. that sets me in like, I, like I said, aligned action. I'm not the, like the type of person to be like, right, I need to go and do this, this and this. I'm like, right, okay, I'm going to go back to my gratitudes. I'm going to go back to my intention settings. I'm going to go back to my full moon rituals. And then things just come to me. So, so it's again, like staying in that because yeah. you can't go in and out yeah, of it. Yeah. That's what I've really learned. Yeah. Like, I'll be in a good point. Like everything will be, when your life's going well, yeah, that's, that's not the time to stop. I know. Like, no, quit. Like, that's no. probably my biggest And that's spot. where we all oh, do. We that do. is where we, we all so, do. Like, even now I'm in a situation where something that I'm potentially rebuilding again and I'm going like having this conversation tomorrow about like boundaries and stuff. And there's one thing that I'm like, listen, my non-negotiable is that we do X, Y, and Z every month. 
And that is a non-negotiable. Mm. No matter how good this shit's going, like we could be, I don't know, the best thing in the world, these need to be happening because what I've definitely learned on the journey is you get caught slipping when you're all happy and forgetting everything and you're like, oh, it's going great. I don't need to do shit. I don't need to write gratitude. Yeah. Fuck this. I'm all good. Like, mm-hmm. head gets a bit big or whatever. And then trust me, the universe will fucking slap that bitch down. Like, <laughs> I've been slapped down so many times. I'm like, okay, back up again. <laughs> back up again. Need to stop being a dickhead here. And I think that's the thing. Um, whenever you're setting up a business, I've, somebody explained this to me once. It's never left me. It's like, Uh, an aeroplane going up in the air right you want to be hammering at 80 percent in the beginning i think personally you've got to put a lot of energy into Mm, it to the point where it's up in the air then you're just like you know floating across and it's like that 20 percent i think everyone thinks that every single day you have to hit your business hard and we've had that discussion and you know everyone works differently and it's really not about that it's about doing something every day whether that is you know i've been ill for the last week but i've been having a clear out of my followers so that you know, opens up new people that I want to connect with this week or, you know, following up with somebody that you spoke to last week about a product. Like, as long as you're doing something small every single day, you're consistent and you don't lose your flow, you don't lose your momentum. And it's the same with your energy and your gratitude and your journaling because the second you stop all that, like you say, you just get hit in the face, don't you? And it's like, where do I start? Panic. Yeah. (laughs) I really love this conversation because I feel like, We've kind of taken everyone for a step, but I just want to kind of summarize mm. that. Like, first of all, your mindset's got to be on point. Actually, I think first of all, you need to understand, is this what I want or is this just social media telling me is what I want? Yeah. Or society mm. telling me I'm not good enough because I don't have a business. Like first, get to that. Mm. What is it I really want to do? Second thing is, okay, what beliefs are stopping me from doing this? Why mm. can't I do this? What beliefs, what has my mum taught me growing up? What's my dad taught me growing up? And someone, when I started earning really good money, I actually lived with this person um because I moved at home really young and they were like you know all rich people are evil and I was actually earning 15 yeah, grand a month mentality, yeah. I was earning 15 grand a month at this point and I'm like sorry I'm just taking you on holiday how are rich people evil I'm literally just giving you a free holiday like, <laughs> like not saying I was rich but there is that yeah. saying money is the root of all evil yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not down for that well, money do you know what I've happiness. really found and they say it a lot in our business money amplifies who you are yeah 100%. if you're a dick you're gonna be a dick, bigger dick but either way you're a dick in the first place if you're a really good person you're gonna be even more of a nice mm-hmm. person and it's just I can't. We're gonna actually have to record a money topic because I'm. Oh so no, I'm right ready now. for money. Yeah, topic. Like, I might go yeah, after yeah, this. Yeah. Like, Brett was ready. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so get to the point of is this what's stopping me mentally believing? Then get to the business business plans. What's the ideas? And like, if you're Holly and you're like, okay, I'm ready to go. I know what I need to do. Like, let's X, X Y, and Z start executing, and you've got that energy to do it. But if you're like me and you're like, I know it's here, but it's and I'm uncomfortable and I don't know. It's kind of like I always think of businesses. Um, the birthing process mm. I love it so first of all you conceive the idea whoop happens mm. and that little intention goes out and it starts to grow and it starts to do its little thing and then you start to go for like your trimesters and then you start to go through labour and that's the point I feel like I was, I was like okay I'm kind of growing this baby right now mm. now I'm in the la- labour <laughs> I'm in the really labour process that hand gesture pr- really creeped me out I'm growing this baby I was like oh <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like laboring right now like I'm a bit uncomfortable mm. and I'm a bit like oh fucking hell I'm sweating <laughs> vagina's on fire <laughs> hey positive talk over here oh yeah <laughs> sorry to my crackers. my vagina wasn't on fire actually <laughs> um but you know like I'm feeling that bit of uncomfortability mm, yeah. um and then I'm gonna get to the birthing stage mm-hmm. so also notice that there's some um, stages in a business and plan out them stages mm. Um, and yeah, just really follow what fucking feels good too. Because one thing I want to leave this on from where I'm standing, but my business wasn't very successful in the beginning when I first started network marketing because I was listening to what other people said. They were like, do this. And I love that they did that. Everyone's like, oh, you know, this one size fits all. Motherfuckers yeah. lie. That does not. <laughs> so then I was like, then it, no one was really doing it in the in the yeah. UK. So I could do whatever I wanted. Yeah. So after that, I stopped doing what I want. Mm. Weirdly, I was actually aligned with my human design. I had no idea massive success then because we start getting a success you stop doing what you were doing right yeah, course, you start yeah. changing and being like oh this person's doing that i'm gonna go do yeah that. yeah Guys, that was their alignment that was mm-hmm. their alignment. i'm trying to steal someone else's shit mm-hmm. and like because i'm like oh that's good that's i need to go do this and everyone's telling you that's what you need to do that's what you need to do now do you know the latest thing is to do this the worst possible advice i literally that made my business plummet it was mm. horrendous and then, guys, I got into a really deep depression at that point. So I was like, I'm not good enough. I can't do this. And then you failed and you're just like a really awful person. Then I had to go back from the fucking beginning of the list. Like, right, what's stopping me? How am I going to change this? 
How do I then go in? Is this what I really want? What's in alignment? What feels good to me? So it's just a fucking cycle, the birthing cycle, like a cycle of life. And you might get to here and go have to go back to here again. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. I yeah. really don't believe there's any such thing as failing. I honestly believe failing is all just not lessons, doing it. isn't it? Yeah, you're yeah. right. Failing is when like you failing's quit. Failing's on your yeah. deathbed. Failing's quit. Do you know what? I don't know. I've got a good point on this. Feral's from Stephen's book. But I believe failing is when you're on your deathbed, you're like, I wish I did X, Y, and Z. You failed because fucking you're going to die now. And this life, you didn't fulfill what the fuck you really wanted to do. Because you because was worried about Tom X, Dick and Harry Z. told yeah. you that you weren't good enough or this yeah. shit and that shit. Like, there's a book actually about the people that, um, this woman wrote a book about people's last wishes on a deathbed oh, yeah. and things. Oh, wow. they, it's, and the main thing they said was that they wish they stopped listening to people and they wish they followed their dreams. Wow. It's the most hurtful, sad thing. Um, but yeah, so Stephen said this really good point. And... So I used to always have a whiteboard on my wall and I used in, I was in it the other day with you. I was like, this one I was making millions, like I was doing this. <laughs> Not millions, but thousands. And um, it was like, um, write three goals every three months. So I do that. And then I used to have two quotes. One was, I'd rather live in life's certainty than life's uncertainty. I'd rather live in life's uncertainty than life's certainty. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, bitch, I want to fuck this shit up. I'm not looking to just be here like casually sliding. My second one was quit. Winners never quit, quitters never win. And I always used to think about that. But actually in Stephen's book, he was like, quitters actually do win like they need to get to a point where you're like okay I don't want to do this anymore it's not for me anymore and it move on work. Mm. or for me I had to quit the way I was doing it I was mm. like I had to quit take a step back I'm like I quit I can't this is killing me and I don't enjoy it and this is BS to then find a new way of doing stuff so even quitting like mm. it's such a BS phrase like don't be afraid of quitting either because it's going to lead every time a door closes another door opens mm. yeah yeah, yeah as long that. as you don't oh, just yeah. quit and then sit in your ass and do nothing oh, quit to move on to something different quit yeah. to make a change that's definitely, that can work. Have intention in your quitting. Don't quit because you're a failure because people told you this and because you lost. Guys, do you know how many times I've been in debt? Like 30 grand, 10 grand, 50 grand. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, cool bitches, I'll pay it back in a month, in a couple months, like don't, or a, a couple year. years. <laughs> Could be fucking 10 years yeah, I've chill. got 500 grand worth of debt to pay back. I do not care. Honestly, I'm still living my life. I'm still happy because I'm not going to let outside influences affect what I know I can do inside. Mm. Never. The day I do that is the day I am failing because I'm failing myself. Yeah. Mm. I think that's the biggest point. You don't fail anyone else like you fail yourself. Mm. That's all for me and my preaching standards. <laughs> no, I think, uh, yeah, but it's good. It's true what you've said. I think to summarise, it's just like trust the timing of your life. Trust yeah. your intuition. Trust you. Yeah. Don't yeah. trust anyone else. Like Only you really know what you can achieve and what you can pull out of the bag. Mm -hmm. I think what's really exciting is just from being, like, being in business for over 10 years is that the fact that there's so much more opportunity now than there probably was 10 years ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was so unheard of for people to just like go self-employed and do this or go and start a business doing this. But now it's almost like there's almost opportunity. The norm now. Yeah, like there's so many people that have full-time jobs and then a side hustle. Yeah. And um, yeah, I just guess keep your eyes open. And, and there's another thing I read the other day that was like famous painter and I think like KFC or just there's really big businesses I can't think of right now that started when they were like 55, 56, yeah. 70. Yeah, I think like, that KFC like, guy was quite old when he yeah. started. Do you know, like, yeah, I think my six, one wish. JK Rowling, her book. Yeah, yeah. yeah. she yeah. Like, yeah. And um, what's his name? The other guy um, who wrote Rocky, like he got declined so oh, many yeah. times. And I think one thing, my biggest wish, if I could really just go back to my younger self at 28, I would love to just go back to him and be like, do you know what, Lace, babe? You're In good. three, four years, yeah. you're going to fucking smash it. Just enjoy this downtime now. Enjoy not knowing what you're going to do. Yeah. Just enjoy the present moment. Enjoy being with your kid. Just enjoy that you can breathe every day because yeah. trust me, four, three, four years, it's going to fuck you up. And do you know what? Today, I am so tired right now. Like I've been going ham at everything. And today I was like, I'm tired. And I've got to be up till 5 a.m. So I've got other stuff I need to do. And I'm like, I'm just going to be so tired this weekend. And I literally today was like, Lacey, in them years, you were praying for these moments. Mm. Yeah. You were so down. Like, I just want to do it. Like, something's stopping me. I was praying for this level of tiredness, this level of excitement, this level of energy. And it's fucking here. So I was like, I'm not going to waste it. <laughs> I know in a couple of months I'm going to be able to sleep. So I'm just going to fucking smash it. And it doesn't feel like a sacrifice. That's yeah. what I'm trying to get people to understand. Like, this doesn't feel like I'm sacrificing sleep or whatever. I feel like I'm going for my fucking dreams. And I feel like I'm honouring myself and giving to myself. And I feel so lit up by it. Mm. Like she's quite literally buzzing. Yeah, no. High as shit. As I was like driving, I'm like, I'm fucking ready for this one. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like, 
that's the thing. Like, and if you think something's a sacrifice, it's probably not right for you. Because yeah. I personally look at back on my 20s, I'm like, I didn't sacrifice a moment. Mm. I really don't believe I've ever sacrificed anything in my life. No, the I only time agree. I sacrificed was when I was doing shit that wasn't aligned like, with yeah. me. For when sure. I was doing shit that other people told me I had to do in order to achieve this shit. Well, you're like, yeah. what is that person doing? What is that person doing? And then you spend so much time looking at everyone else that you're just it not even doing you anything. from your own purpose yeah. oh then, God, doesn't yeah. it? You're frozen. Yeah. yeah. You become paralysed, unable to move because there's so many. I think that's been a big factor for me. Until my gut says 100% yes, I stay stationary. And that is true to so many things in my life, whether mm -hmm. it's like a problem with a friend or a confrontation. If my gut is not like 100% yes, I just freeze. And I think for a long time, that's kind of why I haven't put that much effort into anything side hustle or mm -hmm. even trying to chase it or even trying to figure out what is my passion. If my gut isn't, I rely so heavily on my gut in general for mm. basically I everything. Think that's actually in your human design. I rely on it and it really never lets me down. So if my gut isn't a full yes, I just. If I, it's not a hell no, yes. Mm. If it's not a fuck yes, yeah. it's a hell no. Yeah, 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 that's it. Yeah. That's a great way to do it. Yeah. I really enjoyed oh. that. Anyone else getting us on that? We love business. We love business. <laughs> love business. We also love nine to fives. We just love you. Like, just do fucking yeah. you. Do you. Do what yeah. you want to do. Yeah. Do you. Make that money. Do you, boo. <laughs> <laughs>